I'm James Yates, the hall director in Siler Hall. And I'm Jordan Jeffries, the director of Hearth Hall. Today we're going to be talking about mental health and everything that goes along with that as your role as an RA. And the first thing that we want to talk about is self-care as an RA and uh, finding what activities that uh, can take your mind off of the work-related uh, activities such as exercise, healthy diets, uh, positive relationships, nurturing your spiritual health, uh, like reading scripture, prayer, that type of thing. Um, finding out what everyone's self-care, self-care activities are and how they'll differ between each, uh, each RA and uh, making sure that we all are participating in self-care activities regularly. So uh, what that looks like is a little bit different from uh, what mine would be than to what Jordan's would be. And so it's really important to understand what makes you tick because there's introverts and extroverts and how an introvert does self-care is totally different than what an extrovert would be. And so it's really important to really understand what fuels uh, your system and find activities that uh, really uh, fuel you and take your mind off of uh, some of the day-to-day activities of being an RA. So next we're gonna talk about recognizing the symptoms. Um, This is gonna help both you, your coworkers, or your residents. Um, So if someone is dealing with a mental illness or maybe not the healthiest with their mental health, um, you might see some sleep or appetite changes. They might be sleeping more and eating more or they might be dealing with some insomnia or loss of appetite. Um, There's gonna be mood changes, maybe some withdrawal, like they start hanging out in their room more and not going to activities like cab or normal things that they'd be doing with their friends. Um, They might also drop in functioning, like they might randomly quit a sport and they haven't talked about quitting the sport before. So this is a big factor to look at. Um, Also, they're thinking about problem solving and stuff. They might have difficulties concentrating on things and they might not remember some things like conversations that you've had with them before. They might have an increased sensitivity to like lights and sound, so they might sit in a dark, quiet room. Um, they might experience apathy also, so they might not want to participate in a lot of activities. Um, they might feel disconnected or a loss of sense of reality. Um, again, you'll see some illogical thinking, maybe some nervousness, and overall their character and behavior might change. Part of your role as an RA is making sure that you're paying attention to the health of all the residents in the hall. And part of that requires um, not confrontation, but you need to be able to uh, speak with that resident to make sure that they're doing okay. And part of that is knowing what not to say. Uh, Because when it comes to mental health, there's a lot of things that could actually make the situation worse than what it already is and some of those things might include oh it's just all in your head or we all go through times like this Um, another thing to look for look at is to not say look on the bright side blah 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 or you have so much to live for why do you want to die that uh, that could definitely make this situation a lot worse Uh, Don't say I can't do anything about your situation or just snap out of it. What's wrong with you? Uh, Shouldn't you be better by now? Uh, All those phrases will most likely make the situation one either worse or they will totally shut down and not receive the help that they need uh, to receive. And so make sure that you kind of stay away from uh, sayings kind of like uh, the ones that are mentioned and there's several other ones. And so uh, be be sure that you're always looking at uh, how to make the situation better and not just uh, putting it all on their fault because mental illness is, uh, mental health is a lot uh, different 
than a lot of conflict resolution that we would go through. So another situation that you might deal with with residents or coworkers or even yourself um, are symptoms of suicide. And this is a situation that's come up several times in the dorm that we need to be aware of. Um, so some symptoms to look for is talking about suicide, wanting to die, harming themselves, or just the preoccupation with death, always meditating on the idea of dying and death. Um, the person might express feelings of hopelessness or self-hate, so just always talking bad about themselves and just kind of giving some of those symptoms that we were talking about earlier about mental health. Um, they might be acting in dangerous or self-destructive ways, so driving much more quickly than they would without seatbelts, doing things that could harm them seriously. Um, they might get affairs in order and start saying goodbye to people. Um, another thing with that is them giving, giving away possessions to people. And they might be seeking out pills, weapons, or other lethal objects that could lead to a suicide. Um, and then a sudden sense of calm after a depression. So they just kind of feel okay with everything because they've already come up with their end. Um, an important thing for people that have mentioned suicide or wanting to kill themselves is to ask them if they have a plan and if they have a plan that's time to take action. One important thing is to remember that you are a part of this process and there's a few things that you can do to help the situation. One of those is just to suggest a general checkup with a physician to uh, encourage them to go see uh, a professional about this that there's a stigma that kind of goes around with seeing a, a professional but there's nothing wrong with it and so you could uh, help along with that process you could uh, offer support by going to the appointment with them or encourage them to make a list of all of their symptoms to uh, to present to the doctor to speed the process up to make sure that it's not quite as scary as um, many think that it could be and also show support um, throughout the entire treatment, not just uh, be a part of the beginning of the process, but you can actually help all the way through uh, treatment so to make sure that the resident gets the help that they need. So with this slide, we're gonna talk specifically about how an RA is affected by mental health with their residents. So an important term for us to understand is responsible employee, and RAs are responsible employees. So this means that if a resident states that they're going to hurt themselves or someone else, the RA must report it to either a director or to Dr. Coleman. Um, this is the same instance for a sexual assault case. If a resident comes to you and tells you about something that had happened to them that is along the lines of sexual assault, then the RA must also report that to a director or to Dr. Coleman. With this slide, it shows the, the amazing service that the University of the Cumberlands uh, provides. Uh, it's a completely free um, service to students and faculty. Uh, of We actually have a counseling center here on campus uh, you can make an appointment by either emailing uh, the office at counselingcenter at ucumberlands.edu or the phone number that is listed there is 606-539-3566 or uh, you can walk into the location which is behind the science building in the Browning building and the address is listed there on the screen that uh, all services are free for students and staff members and both individual and group sessions are available for students to best suit their needs. Uh, I would highly uh, recommend using uh, the Counseling Center.